Now imagine what it's like to be Jesus in the shoes of Jesus and to be going through what he was going through at that very moment. Many of us would be extremely angry. How many of us would begin to think about what we could do after we got down from that cross? And Jesus easily could have thought that way. Rightfully, he could have thought that way. And if it was any other normal person, we probably would have thought, you just wait until I get off that cross and what I will do to you. But Jesus says none of that. In fact, Jesus cries out to the Father. And instead of cursing these people, instead of cursing the soldiers that were making a mockery of him, that were casting lots for his clothes, that were feeding him wine vinegar as a way of mocking him. Instead, Jesus is concerned for humanity. And he asks the question, if people can do this while the tree is still green, what would they do if it was dry? I mean, how cruel can mankind become? His heart begun to ache in that very moment. He was he wasn't filled with anger and and vengeance in that moment, but instead he calls out to the Father and he says to them, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And that very phrase begins to reveal to us the very heart of Christ in that very moment. He wasn't upset. In fact, instead of lashing out in anger, and if we truly believe that Jesus was the Son of God, could he not have come down from that cross and bring down judgment on these people who persecuted him, who were torturing him, who were mocking him? He was the Son of God, but yet he doesn't. He refrains. He stops. He stops himself. And instead, he prays for us. He prays for these soldiers. He prays for the people who are making a mockery of him. If we look further into that passage in verse 35, we realize it wasn't just the soldiers standing around and making a mockery of him, but it was the religious leaders. It was the rulers. It was the teachers of the law. It were the people who were of even spiritual authority making a mockery of him while seeing him die on a cross. The most cruel and most humiliating death that anybody could possibly die of in that day and age. And so we see this Jesus who's completely naked, filled with scars and with blood pouring not only from his head but also from his hands and his feet and from the many other wounds that were maybe open from the whips and the lashes that he received just before and Jesus in that moment prays for us that to me is just shocking it's crazy I could not believe I could never believe that someone would pray for me even while I was doing that to them and that is the very heart of Jesus that is how much he loves you and I to the point even when we have sinned Jesus dies for us on that cross Romans chapter 5 verse 7 to 9 says very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die but God demonstrates his own love for us while we were still sinners Christ died for us when I think about those very last minutes of Jesus' life, it enrages me because I begin to think how unfair it is in that very moment that Jesus would have to die that kind of death. Why are people treating him that way? Why would anyone say such things? How could anyone in that very moment when someone is dying, when someone's blood is being drained from his body, when they are humiliated and just put before many people where he's naked and he's stripped and completely humiliated before the public. 
How can somebody say that? And how can anybody do that? Let alone endure it. The temptation is that we want to pour judgment on people and be spiteful and hurt them back. But when we take the example of Jesus, he does none of that. Instead, he prays for us. He prays for those who are judging him in that very moment. And so the question that I have for us today and what we might want to think about is, can we love people even when they are completely evil to us in our lives? Can we choose to pour grace on their lives even when they persecute us and even when they do the most disgusting things to us? Can we? And that's the gritty question of our faith and everything and almost all of what Jesus is asking us to do as humanity, to love without bounds, without condition, without any requisites. Today, in today's generation, our greatest issue is that we have a very low capacity to love people around us. If they differ in opinion, if they differ in the way they think or differ in the, maybe the way they live their life or differ in, if they differ in their perspective, we pour judgment on them and we say, you're wrong, you're terrible, you're horrible, and you don't deserve love. And so we, what we do is we draw a line. Humanity as a whole, when we look at history, many of the time we see nations drawing lines amongst each other saying, you are my enemy. You will never cross my border and I will never cross yours. I will never share with you. And Jesus on that cross could have easily said, you are never going to receive my salvation. You are never going to receive my love. You will never receive my inheritance. But instead, right after this very event, and as Jesus says those very words, it is finished. The curtain of the temple is torn. That means so much to all of us. It means that because of what Jesus had done on that cross, because he died while we were still sinners, that veil was open for us so that we may enter into the presence of God freely because of what he has done on that cross. And so as Christians, where do we stand? Do we stand by drawing a line saying, if you want to receive the love of God, you have to be this way in a certain way. And so we are so busy as Christians judging people for maybe what they have done wrong and said, you're, you're a sinner. You've done this wrong. You do that wrong in your life. Instead saying, even while you were still a sinner, Jesus loved you. He wants you to come to him. And so if you are a believer, the question I have for you is, have you drawn a line and said, if you're over this line, and if you live this way, you belong to Jesus. But if you live this way, you don't belong to him. You don't belong here at all. Or are we like Jesus? That even in the midst of all of that travesty, even in the midst of all that injustice, even in the midst of all of that evil, Jesus still dies for even his persecutors. That eventually, that even people such as Apostle Paul, who used to persecute Christians, who used to kill Christians, would be welcomed into the kingdom of God. He would be brought to him and that he would come to know him. It, maybe some of us have felt all our life that we're not good enough. We're not good enough to come to Jesus. We're not good enough to come to God. I have to get all these things right. I have to get all my sins together. That's the only way to come back to God. Well, here's the great news that Jesus invites you. He says, I died for you. I died for you on that cross. So even in your broken state, you can come to me. I will be your healer. I have opened that door for you to come into my presence, to be with me. And I want to tell you that I love you, that I cherish you, and that you are worth it enough that I would shed my own blood for you. And that is what Jesus said. No matter what people had done to him, and even those people who had done those evil things to him, 
he dies for them too. So over this weekend as we celebrate and remember Good Friday and also Easter Sunday and we close this Easter season and the season of Lent that we would be reminded of how much Jesus loves you and I and that there is no condition for you to come to him. In fact, Jesus is the one who works on your condition. He works in your life. Will you allow him to enter in? Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. God bless you.